Hey guys, Ace here. If you own a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, or any high-end digital camera, then you've probably come across the letters M, S, A, and P on the mode dial of that camera. These are simply known as exposure modes. In this video, we discuss what each of these modes do and when to use them. We've already spoken about exposure in a separate video, which I'll link right over here. But we did take an in-depth look at the exposure modes found on modern cameras. So let's begin with the dial. Most cameras will have a mode dial, which will have a number of modes on it similar to this one. Some cameras might not have a physical dial, but rather a digital one built into the camera interface, which you'll have to familiarize yourself with depending on your camera manufacturer. Now most people usually just put their camera in the auto setting and hope the camera's computer can work its magic. However, it doesn't always get things right, especially in more complex situations. We'll begin with the auto mode. As the name suggests, this mode allows the camera to automatically select all the exposure controls for your image or video. We then have program mode represented by a P on the dial. In this mode, the user manually sets the ISO and the camera automatically selects aperture and shutter speed. The next mode is Aperture Priority, represented by an A on the DAO. This mode allows the user to specify the ISO as well as the aperture, with the camera automatically figuring out what shutter speed to use in order to get a well-exposed shot. Another mode we have is Shutter Priority with an S on the DAO. Here the user manually sets the shutter speed and ISO with the camera automatically determining the aperture. Finally we have Manual Mode, represented by an M on the DAO. This mode gives the user complete freedom in terms of what aperture, ISO and shutter speed to use regardless of whether the values correspond to a correct exposure. So what results do these modes yield in real life? Well, to demonstrate, I took the same shot four times. I made sure the following settings were used where possible. Aperture set to f1.8, ISO set to 500 as well as a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second. To get a base shot, I applied all these settings in manual mode to show what the image would look like, and here it is. As you can see, the shot is slightly overexposed with the highlights, which is great because it gives the computer some work to do in the next few modes. The second picture is shot on the shutter priority mode. Shutter is set at 1 1,000th of a second and ISO still at 500. Notice how the camera uses an aperture of f3.5 to reduce those highlights, however the background is less blurry. The third picture is shot on the aperture priority mode. ISO is still at 500 and aperture is set to f1.8. The camera's computer uses a shutter of 1 3200th of a second to get the right exposure. We now have our blurrier background back because of our wide aperture. Picture number 4 is shot on the program mode. Here ISO is still at 500, the camera has automatically picked an aperture of f4 and a shutter of 1 800th of a second. We've lost that shallow depth of field due to the smaller aperture. The last picture was just a why not moment. I wanted to see how the camera would do in full automatic mode. The camera's computer used an ISO of 125, aperture of f4 and a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second. It also appears as if it changed the white balance to a slightly warmer temperature. So, to conclude, if you want full control of your exposure, you should use manual mode. This is essential when shooting video because you obviously don't want any settings to be changing mid-scene. Use shutter priority when you want to either capture fast-moving objects frozen in time or capture traces of motion created by slow-moving objects. My video on shutter speed should help. Use aperture priority mode when you want to control your depth of field. So, if you want a shallow depth of field, you can widen your aperture to get that blurry background and let the camera do the rest. My video on aperture can be of assistance. Use program mode when you want your camera to do all the work but still want a bit of control with your ISO. This can help eliminate grain in low light situations. I really don't recommend full automatic mode simply because it tends to yield very inconsistent results. However, if you're just starting out, it can be useful. I advise you take note of the settings the camera automatically uses in each scene to help familiarize yourself with the exposure controls. When shooting video, always remember to shoot in full manual mode at all times. You really do not want exposure to be shifting midway through your video. And in general, you want full control of your depth of field as well as your motion blur. I hope that this video was useful to you. Leave a like and a comment if it was. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Catch you guys in the next one.